What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Smiths. And we're going back to the 1986 album, The Queen is Dead. And my cat is playing dead, apparently. She's been sleeping for multiple hours. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we are going to listen to the next tune, which is called, uh, very amusingly, Vicar in a Tutu. Uh, so yeah, um, I feel like there's probably an inherent message here, though I'm not quite sure how to read it. Again, I realize a number of their songs are about regional or at least, you know, um, for them, local issues as it comes to, you know, Manchester and the the northwest of England. Um, ultimately, I'm not sure if there's a specific relevance there. You know, a vicar is not someone you would normally expect to see in a tutu. Um, so again, I feel like there's probably a metaphor at play. Um, not quite sure how to read it given the, the context in terms of, you know, mid-80s, Manchester, UK. <clears throat> but ultimately, um, yeah, vicars suggest that we are talking Church of England, right, rather than um, the Roman Catholic Church where you would normally say priest or father um, or bishop or something like that. Um, and again, I'm sure bishop is a term used in a number of different denominations, but I think by saying vicar we are specifically establishing um, that it's Anglican or... Um, I don't know, I, I suppose I should, uh, shouldn't say that because maybe Presbyterians and others use... Um, the term, but ultimately when I think vicar, uh, I think C of E is I guess what I'm saying. So i um, not quite sure how to take it, but again, I feel like there is some uh, metaphorical or figurative reading apparent. I just can't, I don't have the, the wherewithal to see where we're going. So let's get it. This is Smith's Vicar in a Tutu from their 1986 album, The Queen is Dead. I was watching my kids and I had to sit in some bad dogs The roof of a hole in a church It was worthwhile living a life of a life Set my eyes on the Christian inside of the church In a church He just don't want to live his life this way I can't take the job of living Your death and misery Wouldn't cook on the head of a for that ending, um, yeah, I was still sort of composing my thoughts for what I was going to say. I didn't catch a whole lot of the lyrics on that one, though the one line that stood out every time is like, while Rose is counting the money in the canister, which, you know, given the use of the term vicar, canister, counting the money, it makes me think of maybe it's about, you know, donations, a tithe, if you will, in the way that a basket or perhaps a canister is passed around. Maybe the canister is not in that context, and maybe Rose is not someone who works at a church. Uh, maybe that part of the narrative or that part of the lyrics is um, relevant to something else. Um, but yeah, that was the only line I caught clearly, so I'm not quite sure 
you know, what the, the relevance of the vicar in a tutu phrase is. But musically, it was really interesting. I was saying it sounded like indie country. It also sounded like music you might listen to on a train. Like, it, it felt like taking a journey, um, which is interesting because, you know, if maybe the lyrics were sort of... Um, as I was um, thinking they might be in relation to a narrative, it wasn't making me think of a journey. It was making me think of, you know, a series of events, maybe at a church, maybe in relation to a vicar, perhaps a vicar who is leading a double life, has a very proper image to the world, but actually, you know, is doing something. Although, again, I'm not sure, like, how that would relate to the usage of the term um, tutu. So... Um, yeah, again, not quite sure how to take the title phrase, um, but as I said, um, you know, even if the lyrics were um, opaque and elusive to me, uh, I did enjoy the sonics, and it had this, again, if not country, which I realize, you know, an English group, you know, the country it wouldn't mean the same thing anyway, uh, but that kind of, you know, more folksy sound is, I guess, what I'm saying, um, and as I said, it, for whatever reason, the specific arrangement, there was a moment where it was making me feel like sitting on a train and looking out the window and, you know, hearing this song as, you know, something to mark the passage of time. Um, but yeah, lyrically, got to listen to that one some more. <clears throat> I did notice it was short, and obviously that was uh, a pretty charismatic ending, one that I was not prepared for, but I, I dig that. I enjoy, uh, even if it's sudden, I enjoy an ending that strikes you, an ending that makes you go, whoa, that was crazy, I was not ready for that. So um, just on that um, impression or experience of the ending alone, I give it credit. So um, yeah, an interesting tune, um, maybe not one that stands out as much as, say, Big Mouth Strikes Again, um, but ultimately a cool little tune, and as I said, I'll work on the lyrics, I'm sure a number of you will comment, which again, shout out to all the people who have uh, commented on the Smith's reactions as we've gone through now, you know, almost three albums. Um, so yeah, really enjoying the ride. Do let me know what you think of this one. I apologize, Luca. This is the point where I am going to have to pick you up. Relatively harmless uh, transfer. But yeah, let me know what you think. I will see you next time. Peace.